Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls around the world. It's time to experience the O's on the original sports podcast. Hey, man, technical difficulties have me changing things up a little bit today. How are you doing, Shane? <laughs> Good, man. How about yourself? School was out for you? No, Thursday. Ah, turning and your keys. You got to do what you got to do, but Thursday's a wrap. I'm not real happy about it, but, you know. They I, well, you're going to do, do summer, right? What's that? You're doing some summer time, right? I didn't get hired to teach in the summer this year. Oh, wow. Yeah. They had about a fifth of the amount of kids get hired this year or uh, sign up this year because they got to pay. Yeah. Whereas the last few years, COVID, uh, they had so much money, they offered it free to, to people. So the people took advantage of it, which you can't. How can you blame them for that? You know what I'm saying? Yep. So this year, it's not the same. So, uh, yeah, it is what it is. I mean, I'm just going to roll with the punches. Okay. You know? So yeah, that's all you can do. Yeah. It's all right. You know what? I need this time. It's been a it's been a rough um I wanna say it's been a rough, rough second half of the year. I had mm. one of my roughest classes in like six or seven years, and then with mom passing away and all that stuff. I, yeah. I, I sound like the Grim Reaper here and I don't want to, but it is what it is. Yeah. You know? I, mean... I just I'll recharge my battery. I got four years to go, my man. That could be a long four years, or that could be a short four years. Your call. Four years. Oh, okay. All right. All right. You know, but I, and then on top of that, I, what am I going to do? I'm not going to sit around the house. I just don't want to teach anymore. Right. You feel me? I guess you'll be at Walmart greeting people. I might be there. I might be Lowe's. Hey, what's going on? You need something from Lowe's? There's no <laughs> greeters at Lowe's. <laughs> You know, that's all right. I'll, I'll be someone. I'll, I'll be someone somewhere. You okay. know, if they, build that, if they build that new ice rink out here in Frederick, I'll be out there doing something. Let me see your ticket stub. You know, I'll do whatever. I seen I that. Was, where's it? Where's it going? Somewhere out on seventy. They didn't say exactly where. Like there was no pinpointed area, but it could be pretty exciting for for the community and just yeah. for the general area. If you think about it. Yeah. You know. So I'm excited to see what happens with that. And, you know, I love hockey. So I know you like hockey, too. Yes. You watch any of the playoffs? Of course. I watched Edmonton. I, I, I did watch the first game. Edmonton in Florida. I was kind of disappointed. I mean, shoot. Uh, what's his name? McDavid. He has six shots on goal with nothing. I'll I think they said that was a record, too, I think. I think that's, Listen, they said that's a – yeah. The Bob is legit, man. He's playing yeah. out of his mind, and you yeah. can't take that away from him. That's true, and I mean, once you get that, once you get that role in the playoffs, that kind of yeah, that kind of is what happened. Yeah, that's but true. I, you know what? Florida's one of them teams, though. You know, like you know how you talk about teams that are built for the playoffs. I feel uh -huh. like Florida's one of those teams. That, like they're built to play in the playoffs. They're just tough. They're gritty, nonstop motor. They roll four lines. They got a goalie that's stopping Ooh. anything close. Wow. I mean, I just – I'm enjoying watching them. I really am. You know, it, they remind me – they remind me of the old New Jersey Devils who okay. just they, – they, they, they hit everything that moved. They were a defensive-minded team. Who was you the know, goalie? Not, huh? Who was the goalie? It's on my mind, but I can't – I can't – I can't get the name. Martin Brodeur. Brodeur, yes. Brodeur, Brodeur. yes, yes. Yeah, Marty bro. I loved him. Yeah. I, I met yeah, him one time in good. Pittsburgh. I was with my buddy. My buddy had on these real nice, expensive sunglasses. Marty Brodeur says, hey, where do you get those? And he's like, oh, I, you know, like wherever he bought them at. Because I was never in expensive sunglasses. I lose that shit when I walk out of the store. <laughs> and Marty's like, yeah, I like them. Like, I tried them on. Tried them on. He said, I'm going to get me some of these. I like these. Yeah, He was just that kind of guy. <laughs> Yeah, I don't. Know. I, I thought he was gonna come out of his pocket with five, six hundred bucks. Oh, he could have easy. I'm he sure. He could have easy. You My know. ten. Yeah. So I, I mean, hey, listen, who likes to hit the links out there? Uh, when I hit a great shot, I say it's me, or 
the course. And most of the time, it's the course. When I blow a shot, which there are many, I point my finger at the club. You know what I'm saying? Uh, we're going to talk with Callaway Club's Director of Custom Fitting and Player Performance, Michael Vraska, today. Um, mm. He's going to talk about what's the latest and greatest and who uses them and will be part of what we get into uh, with all that golf stuff. I know we're going outside the box of what we usually talk How about. Sad. Yes. Yeah, I mean, that's yes. kind of fun. I wanted to talk it some is. golf to somebody. I'm, you know? I, listen, listen, I'm, I'm hoping he's going to say, hey, I got a set of clubs for one of you guys or both of you guys. Ooh. <laughs> you know what I mean? Hey, he might, he might start us off on a new a new hobby. Never at, know. At the, at the end of the day, Vince loves to play golf, so he – Oh, okay. I just bought him this uh, – I just bought him this, like, this pass or something. It's called Youth on Course. I think it's mm -hmm. called – is that it? Youth on Course? Yeah. And – uh he, Sounds he's about like, Dad, right. Yeah, and he's like, "Dad, will you give me this? I want to, I want to play, I want to play golf." I'm like, "All right, you know, if, yeah, if, you know." And he's gone wow. like two or three times. He's hitting it well. I mean, how do I say no to that? You know, yeah. he, stay, he likes to stay busy. You know, my kid, man, he loves <laughs> to stay busy. He loves to play different sports. Um, Lots of fishing, huh? I'm sure he's getting yeah. ready for that. Yep, he loves the fish. Yep. Well, he's getting ready for football now too, though. <laughs> Ah, ready for football. Yeah. Yep. Hey, let's do a little spontaneous. There's a few things we should talk about. Let's hit, hit it, it off with. Let's hit it off with the new Mike Tomlin contract, Shane. Yeah. What do you Three think? Year, I, I, I mean, y'all, you guys know my stance with that. Uh, who else you gonna get if you don't keep him? I mean, yeah. he's been consistent regular season playoffs, kind of yeah. funky. Yeah. You know, not great. Not bad. Yep. Is, it, is it bad in the playoffs? Do you think it would be – would you say it's bad or just even? He's he, he's uh, uh, mediocre. Hey, what's going on, Alex? Nice – thanks for joining us. Nice to see you in here. Um, To, to be to be honest with you, oh, that's my, I think that's Vincent's buddy. What's going on, A Money? <laughs> uh, no, to be honest with you, Shane, I have a problem with the fact he can't win a playoff game. He can't even okay. get close to winning a playoff game. You know, I mean, technically the last last time when they beat Cincinnati that year, they were beat. And Cincinnati was so damn dumb that they just threw the game right. away, yeah. you know. But, I mean, he yeah. I don't know what it is about him. But one thing I like that he just did this offseason, not only got a new – not only got himself a new offensive coordinator who's an established offensive coordinator, which he usually doesn't do, but he got some right. established – um Position. Assistant coaches, the receivers coach, the DB coach, you know, that stuff. I mean, that, that's important too. I, I, <laughs> but you also know my other philosophy on coaches. So <laughs> do we really need them? <laughs> they do. Uh, you know what I mean? Uh, you know, what, what are you teaching guys at that level? Yeah, I mean, I guess, I mean, I'm, I'm sure it's cockamamie what I'm saying, but you know, what do you teach a Aaron Donald? What do you teach a Micah Parsons? What do you teach a uh I don't know, you know, guys that are at their, you know, at their at the top. I mean, I'm sure a guy like Caleb Williams comes in, you could show him a thing or two because he's he's a rookie. Uh, but what do you teach those guys? I mean, but also with Mike T, I'm I, um it, the personnel was you know, was it can we can we also say Colbert was bad with the personnel? So he wasn't left with, with great personnel. And when he had when he had great personnel from the regime before, he did win a Super Bowl. Yeah, yeah. Um, I, I think in terms of Colbert, I think as time went on, he got a lot less. Yes, he did. Yeah, he I, I'll admit that. Less. Yeah, he did. He did. You know, as I time think went they on. had the the old school mentality. Yes, passed yep. him by. So yep. when he was out scouting dudes, he was trying to pick up guys. It just wasn't <laughs> happening the way. <laughs> The yeah. way it happened back in the day, you know, right, he wasn't right. getting, he wasn't getting Paul Amalu. He wasn't stealing Greg Lloyd from Fort Valley state. He wasn't getting mm -hmm. Aaron Smith from, from what Colorado state. Colorado you know, state. Like, yeah. Yeah. I mean, you're just not getting these guys like that anymore. Everybody has high end expectations and the league has changed so much. Yes. You, know, I, I mean, you just, it's a passing league now it's pass first. Yeah, but it seems like we're gearing up to be a run first team now again. And, but think about this. Chuck Knoll style. How much pressure does that put on a defense if you have 
more defensive backs than linebackers and guys that can only cover well that can't come down into the box and make a make a tackle. You know, I mean, you got to think about that. When, when Arthur Smith was with Tennessee, look at what he did with with uh, Derrick Henry. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, right, 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 right. With Derrick Henry, and, and yeah. I I know Najee's not as big as Derrick Henry, but he's a big ass dude. Yeah. You know, and Jalen Warren yeah. will run right through you. Yes, he will. You know, that's true. Uh, that's I think. True. We, hey, I think we talked about this too. The kid from Georgia. I'm excited to see that boy play. I really am. Oh shoot! Listen, man, they sound like some other running backs too, man. They got a slew. They got a slew of players this year, man. And, it's gonna be interesting to see is. how this how this play. Yeah, they got a slew of guys. I don't know. Can you take all those guys to camp, or do you gotta have a certain number? I don't even you, know that. You could take ninety dudes to camp. Okay, where are they at right now, number wise? Eighty eight. I have no idea. Okay. I have no idea. Yeah, they got a slew of guys, that, man. Jeez. Before they sign some, Ooh. before they sign somebody, they gotta cut somebody. So they must be at the cap of how many okay. you can carry. Yeah. Oh yes, they signed Sutton and cut Buka, uh, Luca, the yeah, Luca guy, Luke yeah. Roke, yeah, the cornerback guy. Okay, yeah, that makes sense. So yeah, it'll be interesting it... to see. I mean, I do. I want Tomlin. I want Tomlin to make some changes to himself, his co- coaching style. I think he's great with the guys. I really do. I mean, we 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 probably said this a hundred times. People have heard us say this. Anybody who can hold Antonio Brown in check, like he did. For nine years. I mean, that man yeah. is flat out crazy. He's just nuts. And he held him in check for nine years. Well, you probably figured four of those years were probably okay because the first year he didn't do much. Second, he was finding his footing. Third, he was establishing himself. Then the fourth came and it was like, I'm here. Then he, yeah. So, yeah, but yeah, either way, I see what you're saying. You know, I mean, that just, guy's said- fall, that dude has fallen to, whew, man, that's, whew. He's a mess. He's like a like a Dennis Rodman now. <laughs> he, uh, the Rodman played till it was time to retire. Oh well, yeah, Rodman he, he did play. That's true. That's true. But I mean, you think Brown's broke? Like he filed for bankruptcy, didn't he? Last yeah, he filed of, for bankruptcy. Huh? Yeah, how how you file for bankruptcy after making millions like that? Well, I mean, it happens. We do know it happens. It's just you know when you're trying to own an arena football team and when well, I knew when he stopped paying those guys it was going it was downhill. That's yeah. just crazy. That's where yeah. it, that's where it all started for him. But yeah. Well I, I certainly can't feel bad for a guy like that when uh Mm-mm. when he had the world by the tail and he blew it. I mean he yeah. blew it outright. Yeah. You know I was reading today Aaron Donald of course who just retired he's from Pittsburgh He's already starting to build housing in Pittsburgh, like like units, like apartment buildings. I said, man, he took his money and he he did right. You know what I mean? He's smart. Yeah. He's smart. Yeah. You know, you got to give him credit. Hey, hey, Shane, how about Darren Waller plays one year for the Giants? He pens that song for his girl after she he got a divorce. <laughs> now he's retiring. What is that shit? He probably got a lot on his mind, man. A lot on his mind. Um, I, I seen that. I was like, I thought it had already happened. So I had to go and read it. Just, and I was like, yeah, he just retired. I thought he retired earlier. Or did he, he was talking about retiring, I, I believe. Or, or was he? Okay, he was. Right. That's what I thought. Um, 31, tight end. I'm, you know, I, I assuming he's got his money still. And he just... Don't want to do it anymore. I mean, is he equate point. to? Is he equate? Nah, he's not as good. But would you equate this to somebody like uh, uh, when Kelvin Johnson retired, or when like Barry Sanders retired? Those dudes were at the top of their game. Waller was just a few years ago. He was a top yeah. tight end in the league. Yeah, I would say that. Yeah, yeah, he was. He definitely was. He was at least three, one through three every. Yeah, yeah. I would say yeah, because he was pretty much at the top of his game. He was there. He was there. He was yeah, yeah. I and would that say was on so, a yeah. bad Raiders team. Yeah, that, it you was. You know they were bad. He was still making all those catches. Uh, Derek and, Carr, yes, I was holding out for Derek Carr, yes. You know, uh, I, yeah. I guess he didn't want to play for Daniel Jones. Yeah, or right. like I said, man, he just you know thirty one. I mean, he's he's had enough. You know, maybe, you know, like with uh, back to Aaron Donald, a guy who 
what was he 30 i believe he, you know they just don't want to do it don't you know want to keep their mental keep their head right you know their body right want to be able to play with their kids you know um yeah you think I that would, leads back to some of those guys being smart enough to realize what happened with guys that had cte yeah, I mean, to go back to playing, like I said, we're playing with our kids. Like when I was up in Cooperstown, you know, there were baseball guys, you know, they were older, you know, they were retired, but their kids were there. You know what I mean? And it's like they can, these guys can still move around. Like they were, I took a picture. It was David Price. He was playing, uh, first he was playing uh, football with all the little kids. Then he was playing uh, wiffle ball with all the little kids. It was him and it was another guy that retired, you know, played baseball. They were out there, but you know what I mean? They get to do that kind of stuff. You know what I mean? At football, you know, you would see like Bettis, like after a game, he could hardly walk. So, yeah, yeah I mean, I'm, I'm sure that, you know, that I'm sure that that's has a lot to do with it. If, if you think about it, not, I know you got two girls. Yes. If you had a boy, would you encourage him to play football or would you let him pick his path? I'm letting him pick his path. I'm not encouraging him to do anything. I, I you know, I let the, I let the girls pick their path. I, you know, I, I, I hope I was hoping that they would stick with playing instruments, but they didn't, but you know, but, uh, uh, yeah, I wouldn't. I wouldn't push him to it. If he wanted, I would let him. Now, I, there's a lot of parents who don't even let now. You know, what I mean, I would let yeah. him because I mean, I, I mean, we we I played football. I said I played started at seven. You know, I mean, and I'm sure the equipment wasn't that good back then. I no, I'm, I'm I'm pretty sane. <laughs> I'm all right. <laughs> You're about 80 percent. <laughs> yeah. Um. Too bad the rest of the boys couldn't be with us today. Big Chops is still working. Yeah, where is everybody? What happened to everyone? Big Chops well, is working. He yeah. just sent us that message. And then T. Sis told me this morning uh, his boy is supposed to start a quarterback for Seneca, and he had a seven-on-seven seven game. So, okay, you know, right. how do you fall to how do you fall to dad from going to see his kid play? Uh, yeah, I agree. You said supposed to, so, so I can't plan my falls around going to see, see him play? Who? Max. You can plan your fall and go see okay. Max play. Okay. I mean, yeah. you said supposed to. I don't want to show up, and he ain't. Well, if I'm he's not upset. playing quarterback, he'll be in, on defense. I can almost okay. assure you that. Okay. You know. All right. You can always drive right down the road and see Big V play. He's going to be playing. Yes. Him and uh, – we're working on the center position because he's got good oh, feet. Wow. And he's smart. He's okay. smart. You know. Center. Man. It's it shocks me every time he brings home a report card and he has honor roll. I'm like, damn, where did he get the brains? Then I realized <laughs> I married a smart woman because she married me. There you go. <laughs> uh, yes and no, but yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. So can they good, you know, sl slipping back to Waller. I mean. Do you think inevitably that'll be something we see me more and more of with an 18 game schedule coming down the road? These dudes are like, all right, let me just get my bank for, for, uh, you know, till I'm 30 and then I'm walking away. Uh, yeah. I mean, you know, as long as they're keeping their money, I'm hoping that's the, that's also part of the new thing. They're saving some of this money. Like, man, you know, all yeah. I mean, I don't think Waller was the guy, the kind of guy, I, I don't even know where Waller went to college. Actually, I got to look that up, but, I don't think he was the guy that had 40 cars and 40 necklaces. So, you know what I mean? I, I, yeah. I, yeah. If he's, if he's writing love songs, I'm, I'm sure he got a little bit of money left. Yeah. <laughs> Did you hear that thing? Mm -mm. Tay, for our listeners out there, do not listen to Darren Waller's <laughs> love song. Oof. <laughs> let's get on. Let's yeah. get on Caitlin, man. Let's get okay. on Caitlin. Okay. So Caitlin did not make the Olympic team. And she handled it very well. She said she felt like they picked the best 12. She said she felt like it gives her something to strive for. And a lot of people are complaining that they should at least set her because people are going to watch it. Well, guess what? I agree with them not putting her on there. And I think people are going to watch it no matter what. She's got some people interested in the game now. You know, it's been a decent game. I think she should have been just for that reason. It's kind of like the Christian Leitner year. Remember when he was on Dream Team? We yeah. knew Christian Leitner wasn't going to take anyone's time. You know what I mean? But yeah, he was true. Christian Leitner, you know what I mean? We knew it. You could have put her on there just to put on her. Like you couldn't have thirteen. Is that is that was that a thing that you had to have twelve? There's a guy, Mike Gott. Mike Gott. Hey, what's going on, reliever? Good to see you today. 
Yeah, I um, mean, you couldn't you couldn't have thirteen. You had to have twelve. So they released her. They released the information that she's the number one alternate. And then there's a buzz everywhere that, you know, there's always somebody who drops off the squad. Always somebody gets hurt. Something, you know, right. something somewhere along the line, and they feel like she'll make it. Now, let me ask you this: She gets on the squad. Let's say she she makes the squad inevitably. Mm-hmm. Are they going to try and figure out a way to put her on the floor? Or is she going to be the, you know, the 12th person off the bench or the 15th? Or I, I can't remember exactly how many it is, but, you know, is she going to be the, one of the last people to come off the bench and play? Oh, man, I think you got to let her play, man. I mean, it, again, going back to Leitner, where we knew he couldn't do nothing with. I mean, he Leitner probably could have played against some of the other countries. I think he did, actually, matter of fact. But, um. You knew he wasn't going to take what well, Leighton was a forward. He wasn't taking Barkley's time, Malone's time, who else? Draxler, whoever else they had. We knew he wasn't taking minutes away from those guys. But with her, again, you probably got to let her play like Leitner did. You know, if you're blowing someone out or just roll her out there. I mean, what's the crime in that? I mean, I don't I don't see nothing wrong with it. Now, she ain't going to better shoot her usual 25, 30 shots, but. Her numbers are not bad. She right. she okay. is in the top five in, in uh, scoring. I think it's assists and maybe steals. I can't remember. I know there's three categories that she's she's playing really well in. In fact, at the Wizards game on or at the Wizards game at the uh, Mystics game, I think it was Sunday. They had almost twenty one thousand people there. So twenty yeah. and some change, we'll say. At the NBA Finals game, they only had nineteen seven. Wow. Yeah. Yep. That was a big deal to tell you put out there like that. So, Whoa. you know, is it, is it because people want to see if she's the real deal, what she does on the floor? Cause you don't see everything or what, you know, what, what's the fascination? With her? Yeah. Probably to see if she can duplicate what she did in college. I would think, you know, is she the same? Is it the same? I don't know. I don't think it's the same. I, you know, because, of course, you got a, it's a concentrated number. So, I mean, everyone probably in WNBA is just as good or better. Just as good or better. So, I mean, I, you know, just to see. Yeah, I would think it's, it's to see if she can do what she did in college. And once that wears, if it wears off, I think that'll wear off on everyone else too. Do you think eventually she will be – the number one player in the NBA in the WNBA, or is they call it the W? Well, I think now there's it's uh who who's they say uh Aja Williams. Yes, and she's pretty young, so that's going to take some time. Well, she's twenty seven, but uh, I mean, there's a possibility. There's I mean, there's always a possibility. I mean, I wouldn't even know who the star was last year or the year before that, so. Ah, uh, not sure. I, was, some of the some of the players I remember, like Cheryl Swoops. Uh, oh, okay. Well, those guys. Yeah, that's old school, though. Hey, Frankie, what's going on? That's old school. Those guys. On? Hey, here's Swoop. something interesting. Oh yeah, Cheryl Swoop. Here's something interesting. Uh, our guy, Mike God, check it out. Um, he watched Major League Baseball for the first time in 20 years. Oh. When uh, the Mets and Phillies played over in London. And he really enjoyed it. Yeah, I could see that. That actually, that actually turned out to be, uh, turned out to be quite the series. That that series over there. Uh, Mike, I mean, if he doesn't mind, if he's going to respond, um, what what was the holdup for the last twenty years? Why did you have to wait? I wonder. Well, I wonder why he had to wait twenty years. Well, I think it- I think baseball just MLB just went back over there and played oh. the series. You know, I, I, to be honest with you, see, the NFL and the NBA do it right. They play some games in different places to pull people in to watch it, and that makes a huge difference, a huge difference, um, that their market has opened up so much. MLB right. will play – like last year, MLB played in um, South Korea or – say I can't remember exactly where it was, but they went, they went to one of the Asian countries and played, and they had a huge, huge output. Um, I think they picked – I think they picked the right teams. Philly being the loaded team in Major League Baseball, in my opinion, and the Mets mm-hmm. being a New York team. I, I, I actually. Hey, Frankie, check this out. Frank, Frankie's here with us today again. Good to see him again. What's up, Frankie? Um, Frankie Knuckles. I was up in uh, 
New York City. I went up there with my, my daughter because Jenna and I do a one day bus trip um, every year at the end of my school year. It's our daddy daughter thing. And um, the Yankees are playing the Dodgers. You could feel the buzz in the city. There were a shit ton of Dodgers fans walking around uh, Times Square, all over Manhattan. And uh, they showed this thing where all the Dodgers, all the Dodgers fans, like had gathered at one place and they walked down the Yankee stadium with the cop car leading them and shit. It was pretty cool to see. Um, it, it, that's such a great, great rivalry to see there. Um, Frankie said, um, just always remember Yankees were the first team or first to play a London game with the uh, Red Sox. Yep. Yep. <laughs> yep. Damn, Frankie. God, Frankie, Frankie's- I got to tell you, my man, uh, the Yankees hold a special place in my heart. One of my all-time favorite players at the position of catcher, Thurman Munson, was a Yankee. And uh, my other all-time favorite baseball player, and I don't know why, I guess because he, he looked like I did back in the day, but Babe Ruth. Just love watching old footage of him and stuff. He was just such a cool guy. Just somebody you'd see on the street having a shot of whiskey and smoking a cigar. So that, that kind of always romanticized me as a, him being a normal guy. But, uh, yeah, that, that series over there in London, uh, you know what? Just Bryce Harper alone, getting Bryce Harper there, the way he's been playing, he has been lights out this year. And mm. uh, to ham it up to the crowd, Michael, I'm sure you saw this. He hit a home run, and he did the soccer celebration. He went running towards the dugout, slid on his knees, and did one of these deals here. <laughs> uh, it, it was it was pretty cool. It was pretty cool to see that. Um I've grown to really like Bryce Harper. I think he, I think he has matured into uh, uh, a good baseball player, and and even more so, like a, a better stand-up guy that kids can actually now look up to. When he was doing shit like yelling at umpires and things like that, that that lost me as a that lost me as a fan. He was uh wasn't he like a mint coke Rolls Royce kind of guy? Yeah, yeah, yeah that's what I thought. I thought. That. <laughs> Yeah. Hey, Frankie, there's no doubt about what you're saying, my man. Judge has been lights out in the last month. Unfortunately, yeah, you guys lost Soto for, for a period of time, and uh, that's definitely going to make a difference um, until he comes back. But I can still see the Yankees rolling. You're getting some good pitching there, and, and that's been a big difference for you guys. Uh, that That's exciting to watch happen, too, um, seeing them be competitive. Uh, they, they're definitely a better team than the Dodgers. I, I feel like – in my my opinion, I feel like the Dodgers are a bit overrated anymore. Um, they spend yeah. all that cash. Yeah, they spent all that cash to get Otani. Um, oh, Soto's back tonight. Oh, that's good news. He is having a, an MVP season. He really is. Uh, Mike said basically no MLB coverage on my sports channel. I can watch uh, NFL and NBA on that channel, but no MLB. I used to get a channel um. here that covered MLB from the nineties. To about 08, then it was pulled. Um, wow. MLB is all about the mighty dollar. I will tell you that, Mike. They are the only, the only sport that doesn't have any form of heart or any form of cap in um, professional sports. They have no form of cap. They pay a luxury tax, which means you can spend, you know, however much you want. But you better realize that you're going to pay a luxury tax on on what you're spending. And uh, teams like the Dodgers and the Phillies have the money. The Yankees have the money. So speaking of um, MLB, I'm going to Alabama next week. I'll be watching um, the uh, Giants versus the Cardinals at the at, at, at um, Rickwood, the oldest America, oldest baseball park in America. Um, speaking of the Yankees, Frankie, I'll see uh, CC Sabathia again this week. Uh, next week, he'll, he's having a softball game, celebrity softball game. So a lot of events going on down in Birmingham next week for MLB. But. I'm pretty excited, so yeah. You need to hit Mrs. Uh, Sabathia up and see if she would like to join Ooh, the show. It is right. If she won't, if she won't let Cece do it, <laughs> let's get her on. Yes, yes, she's an agent. I, I forget. I'm glad you reminded me. I gotta. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. I actually think people would be interested in hearing the perspective of a wife, of a, of a sister. Uh, you know, like well, I had, um, I had Ironhead Hayward's wife on. Uh, Charlotte Hayward. Well, her last name is different now. She just got, uh, she just got remarried. But anyway, I had her on the show a couple of years ago, 
she's my most watched YouTube show that I have. Wow. My YouTube, yeah, my, yeah, my YouTube work, show. I'm a, I'm a, yeah, I'm gonna get on that. It was interesting because, like, you know, people were coming up to him and asking, "Hey, Cece, you think you can do this in October?" And he would say, "Hey, you need to." Right there. <laughs> yeah. 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 That was, I was like, wow. And then I had to look it up and yeah, that's what she does. I was like, wow, that's pretty interesting. So she's his agent basically. Pretty, yeah. Pretty much. That's interesting. Well, good for yeah. him. I mean, yeah. it's good to have that kind of relationship. Um, mm -hmm. We know a former, pro, we know a former professional athlete whose, whose wife uh, went to her head and she left her guy, even though he was a great guy. And, uh, you know, he she took him for what he was worth, but he he made out okay. Mm. Um, good people are the Sabathias, man. Good, they're good people. Both him yeah, and yeah, I bet. Is he? Great does he people. speak heavy Spanish or is he? Uh, no, straight English. He was all straight English. Got yeah. to meet with Mike King before he traded him to to San Diego. Yeah, how was your experience? Usually, those dudes are you pretty good. I found baseball player guys to be pretty good. Today. Okay, then, yeah, because, I mean, like I was saying about CeCe, but all those guys up there when we were up in Cooperstown a couple weekends ago, they were all great guys, man, all of them. I mean, they would take pictures. I mean, they would sign things. They would sit and talk to you about regular stuff. I mean, like I said, we ate breakfast, lunch, and dinner with Ozzie Smith and Dave Winfield. And, yeah, I'm like, wow, this these they were good people. I mean, yeah, we're going to get some of those people. pictures up on our um... – I want you to resend me those pictures, but e email them to me so we can get some pictures up. Yeah, I'm gonna take a lot this time. Website. I'm gonna huh? take a whole lot this 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 time. Yeah, I'm gonna I be thought there for it was interesting days. when Rasheen when Rasheen was up in Cooperstown and met these guys. He was texting back pictures to to the gang and um, Ozzy Smith's a little dude. Like I just can't he, believe. How, yes, I can't believe how tiny he is. <laughs> right. You know. Right. As opposed uh, to Dave Winfield, who was huge. Oh yeah. my gosh, that was a big, big man. They hey, uh, go ahead. Did you, uh, did you, are you watching this? Um, are you watching this, uh, NBA finals? Are you shocked? Mm -mm. No, um, I was, um, I, I figured, especially if Porzingis came back, that it was going to be just too much for, 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 uh, Dallas to, to, you know, Dallas really, you really only can. You can only really count on, in my opinion, people are going to say, uh, but you really only can count on Luca. Like Irving is here and there. He might give you 30, then he might give you 17. He ain't, you know what I mean? Like, you know, oh, they're the best backcourt ever, like ever or something they were saying two weeks ago. Like now. Yeah, like, I saw that. Eh, I where, saw that. Where, where's this great backcourt at now? <laughs> you know what well, I mean? They, they yeah. got another dude hurt. He's supposed to come back. I forget who it was. I was just reading. Um, who? But you Dallas? can't. Yeah. Um, you can't. You can't go into the finals with with injured guys that are productive for you, especially when when your bench is what twelve guys in the NBA, something like that, fifteen guys. Yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah. You can't. You can't afford to be missing anybody. It's not like you can call somebody up from the D League <laughs> and expect them to be productive for you in the finals. I mean, that's ridiculous to think. And it saddens me how bad this has played out. I will say that Doncic is just—he was hurting so bad yesterday, and he had a triple double. What right. do you have? Thirty-two, eleven, and eleven, or something like that. I was like, something like "Damn, that. yeah." You know, yeah. But I just, maybe, uh, maybe Mark uh, Cuban knew something. That's why he got rid of that team. Although I think somebody shared with us that. Although he got rid of that team, he is going to still be heavily involved. Um, he'll be paid to be heavily involved now. He doesn't have to worry about pulling all the strings. Mm -hmm. I know, did you see the Hurley, Hurley turned down the Lakers? The yeah, 70 I wanted million, to say so. something about that. How would you feel about that? Let's just say... Well, let's just say the Lakers hit you up. Uh, you're a strong college basketball coach. You've got your shit together. You've won a couple of championships um, and they hit you up to come and coach those guys. No reason being as a college coach, everything runs through me. Everything NBA, it runs through GM coach. Your best player, which is LeBron. So you got to go to LeBron and now it's me. Now you're fourth. Nah, I'm cool. I don't want that. 
I don't want that. You think, you think LeBron had something to say with who they were picking? Like, a, like Probably. A, a strong I think he wants there. Reddick, if I'm not mistaken. I think he wants yeah. Reddick. I just, so just I'm sure. My, I'm sure. just came across my, my screen about it, that they're now in discussions with Reddick since, since Hurley turned him down. Hey, Mike, yeah. Mike shared this with us. Check it out. Uh, my fave World Series I watched over here was the Red Sox win. Oh, back in uh, uh, 0405 area. Yeah. Yep. Yep. The first win since the curse. Now, I know my guy Frankie is not happy about that, but still, <laughs> uh, that was pretty interesting to see. I'm not a Red Sox fan myself. Um, I did like particular players like Jim Rice and, and Freddie Lynn back in the day, but I'm not a big Red Sox guy by no far stretch imagination. I met Jim you Rice. Know. Nice guy. Oh, you did? Yeah. Yeah, he I gotta tell you, he was always one of my favorite, favorite players as a kid. Um, there was just his game, his he was cool, he had a swag to him. Um, I like I'll be honest with you, I miss those seventies type of baseball players. You know, uh, it was just different. It was different to me back yes. then. I kind of lost track of it. Uh, when I lost track of baseball, fellas, when Kevin Brown went to the Dodgers. Yeah, it was the Dodgers. Kevin Brown went to the Dodgers. He was paid $106 million for six years. And I was kind of like, damn, this dude's going to make that kind of money to play every five or six days. Like, shit, that is insane to me. But now I think about what guys are making, how they're cashing in. Uh, the, the best is yet to be told, though, because somebody's going to be that that billion dollar player. We're, we're getting closer and closer with Otani's contract. I stopped watching baseball when Bonds, Bonilla, and them left the Pirates, man. Because they that long were going, ago. yeah, yeah. And then they, you know, the Pirates start doing that craziness with not getting anyone good. Sammy Khalifa, uh, <laughs> those guys. <laughs> those were bad, bad times for them. Orlando yeah, Merced. You remember Orlando Merced? Yeah. 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 I, I ate tacos in a taco truck uh, after drinking. <laughs> drinking down in, um, uh, not the south side, the strip. We was drinking in the strip, and him and I were standing there talking, eating tacos. I'm like, oh shit, what's up, Orlando? Like, I didn't even realize it was him. It was like 2 30 in the morning, you know, like you're just out, you're yeah. having fun, and it's it's mm -hmm. you know, he was pretty cool. We just hung out, crushing tacos. Merced. He's like, I gotta get out of here, I gotta be home, I gotta get up tomorrow, I got a game. You know, like, <laughs> <laughs> it was like 2 30 in the morning. It's a taco truck. Orlando Merced, he had power, right? Wasn't he a power hitter? Uh sort of. Yeah, he could play Wasn't out it? in first base, he was a lefty. Oh, he might have switched it. I can't remember. I'm looking him up now. I thought I thought Orlando was the guy who hit the home run very real somewhere. He hit one for like when he was in the in the minors. He hit one pretty far. I heard. Maybe it Could wasn't have. Orlando. Maybe it wasn't. I don't know. Hey, let's jump over to the NHL real quick. Jump. We're still we're still waiting for a guy to come on. I don't know where he is. Um, the NHL has been really interesting. You know, everybody's complaining. This is not the dream matchup. The dream matchup was supposed to be uh, uh, Edmonton and Edmonton? New York. The New York fans. Uh, Rangers. The, yeah, the Rangers. The New York fans were excited to be there. They did all that they could to get to that point. And Edmonton obviously has been in the hunt for forever with McDavid and Dreisaitl. But they didn't get that. They got Florida. And uh, if you're not a hockey fan, I'm sorry, I'm going to bore you a little bit with you here. But um, Florida came out and they did exactly what you need to do in the playoffs to win playoff games. You know, now Edmonton did outskate them. I will say that. But I'll Definitely. tell you what, anytime they got close, anytime they got in the zone, they knew they were in the zone because they were just smacking the shit out of them. Um, I think you shared with me that uh, McDavid had six shots on the, in the first game. But Bobrovsky is not a rookie goalie. He's been down this road. Right. He's been down this road. We know what to expect from Bob. And uh, he really held them in check. Um, everybody's bitching about Keith Kachuk. And I put a point out there on this group I was reading 
on, I think it was on X, they were all complaining about Kachuk. And I said, you know, you're all complaining about Kachuk and, and how he's beaten up on the superstar and everything I said. But a few years ago when the Penguins, well, in 17, when the Penguins played Nashville and um, P.K. Subban was beating the snot out of Crosby and Crosby finally got him to the point where he, he was on top of him on, a, on the ice and Crosby smashed his head, like smashed his head down like this a couple of times on the ice because Subban was doing all kind of dirty shit. And everybody got on Crosby about it. And I'm like, wait, you either need to shit or get off the pot. Okay, your superstar should be able to give it out if he if he gets it given to him. And people don't get that piece of hockey. Like hockey's not like any other sport. And today there's no fighters in hockey, you know, per nope. se. You know, there's nope. no there's no guy they're gonna send out there to to protect McDavid. So hmm. McDavid is is a big dude. He's like six five, two hundred or some crazy, some crazy size with that kind of speed. He needs to turn around on Kachuk and smack the shit out of him. You know, like whatever it takes. There's got to be someone out there they got that can fight, though. Or or hit. They don't have anyone? They're not built like that. They had, uh, Gretzky had who? Cicerelli? Gretzky had McSorley. No, no, McSorley, I'm sorry. Marty McSorley. Yep. Wow. McSorley not only, he not only had him up in Edmonton, he had him on L.A. when he went to L.A. You know, and, yeah. and Marty, Marty's a great guy. He's another guy I got to meet a couple of times. Um, just a very nice man. Just very, very nice. Very, very uh, engaging to people. Mm-hmm. You know, he he's not the persona that he was on the ice. And that, that was really cool to see that from a guy like him. Right. You know, so they've played, um, um, Edmonton's played 100 games this year. They played 100 games? Florida's up yeah. to 99. So Matt, uh, Matt Sundin of the Leafs. What do you what yes. do you say, Big Mike? Uh, Big Mike. What about Sundin? What's he bringing to the table? I Talk I always us. thought he was a big guy too, but he was thinner than uh, McDavid is. McDavid's a little. I don't want to say he's a fat guy, but he's a thicker kid. You know, he's thicker. Um, I think if Edmonton doesn't win this thing, they're going to tear this down. Ooh. I think they're they're going to have to yeah. tear this. Uh, I'm hearing whispers of Dreisaitl getting traded and trying to bring in two guys that change the dynamic of the team and equal what he has. You right, know, right, maybe right. you know, maybe a couple of guys that can chip in with 25 goals each, but mm-hmm. they bring in more grit. And uh, Edmonton doesn't have that. Florida is built for that. Florida is built to win the playoffs. Yeah. Uh, when you, you when you say they're built, you mean you're talking about. Defensively or just all around? I'm talking all around, all around. Uh, Michael says uh, super sniper. He he said Sundin was a super sniper. He was man. That that Quebec team though that he played on, uh, they were just sick with with Joe Sackick and Sundin and yeah. And then they moved them to Colorado. Yeah. Uh, my God, they were just out of control in Colorado. The only thing that I didn't like was they had to go and get Ray Bork to win that championship, but they also had Patrick Waugh. They had a bunch of guys at the end of their career, and uh, they got that championship, and then they dissolved that team. Now that Colorado team is is completely rebuilt with Nate McKinnon, the the lead dog out there. You know, so I'm not sure where our guy is, uh, Vraska. I, I he might have got into something going on at, yeah. at work because he said he was gonna said he was gonna be good. I'm sure he'll. He'll contact us if he if he did get into something at work and, and wasn't able to do him. We'll get him rescheduled. Um, it's a little bit peculiar that he didn't join us like uh, guys normally do. So, um, what else you think, Shane? What 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 do you have going on with golf this weekend? Because it's is it the Open this weekend? Is it the Open? Uh, I'm not a big follower of that one. I don't know about that one. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it is. It's, it's it's going to be a good one. I think that's why I asked Mike to come on now. Uh, Mike is asking 18, us about, It says the 18th to the 21st oh, okay. next week. Yep, that's why I asked him to come on right now. I wanted Tuesday. to talk a little bit about that. Who's using the Callaway clubs and and uh, who's he help out that's a contender? Hey, the purse is 16-5. Yikes. That's pretty nice. <laughs> pretty nice. 
16 5. That's one Jeez. week's worth of work. That's Listen. one week's worth of work. Listen, 16 5, you could basically not work again. You could say, I'm done. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Hockey Town, Michael, uh, basically what's going on with those guys in Hockey Town is. Uh, they're in, a, they're in a complete rebuild there, and they've got a lot of good young players, mm-hmm. and they are going to be a team to be reckoned with do. here in the next few years. They've got some money under the cap going into next year in hockey. Uh, the cap went up to $88 million. they got some money that they could go ahead and, and sign a few guys that that are going to help them. Uh, they, need some, they need some veteran leadership is what they need. Any team who's that close like they are to not only getting in the playoffs but going over the hump, and uh, making a run needs that better in leadership uh, almost in any sport, but especially with hockey. Um, and that's where they're sitting right now. They got There's some no young question. talent. You know who got young talent, and I'm, I'm, st- I'm still waiting on the Devils to come alive. They got a lot of young talent. Tons well, of young talent. The, the, the coach that they just hired is going to be the difference maker for them. Okay. There's no question about it. He's a solid coach. Um, Toronto ran out of patience because they didn't get a cup with him in a couple of years. And that leads to what it led to, which is them moving on from him and him immediately going to, to the devils. Cause he'll take those guys there and he'll mold them like he molded Toronto and he'll be successful. Dude, they got, they got both Hughes. They got, he sure they got Brad. I mean, they got some talent. Yeah. They got some talent, man. Yep. I'm on a, uh, I'm on a show now on Thursday nights. Um, get the puck out of here, and uh, I like that. It's it's all about hockey, uh, and the guy who is the host, like I'm kind of a guest host. Uh, uh-huh. The guy who's a host is a huge New Jersey fan, and he's been talking a lot about how things are coming together there. Um, they're going to move a couple of parts, and they're going to uh-huh. bring a couple of parts in, uh, veteran wise, to help them right. get to where they need to. Well, you know, you know how I figure. You know how I get my my uh, my knowledge, right? How? Come on, PS Five. When I'm oh, playing NHL, yeah, I was just gonna say. <laughs> I was just gonna say. Ah, hey. Yes, I, was, I That's my team, the Devils. Man, they're so loaded with young talent. It's like we're they're flying around on the ice. Since we don't know what's going on with Mike, let's get into this one more subject. Uh, we got the championship game coming up for the UFL. Oh yeah, we got the championship uh, game, and and we actually got to experience a game, which was a lot of fun. Um, Hakeem Butler needs another shot in the NFL. Would you agree? Well, yes. What I didn't realize about Hakeem, what I didn't realize was he got hurt in camp last year. I, I mean, he's six that. six, and he's a four four guy. Yeah. I mean, that's pretty pretty dynamic. The only thing that works against him is he's got to be about twenty six now, twenty seven. Yeah, because he was drafted in 2019, and this right. is 2024. Yeah, but I was that's just reading still, up on him. That that's a good that's a good age to to get a decent contract, come in and make a name for yourself. But his second contract isn't going to be like a normal rookie. So it's McCarron. McCarron's in the bowl. He's in the championship. Yes. <laughs> yep. Imagine that. Yep. Because he's. Uh, San Antonio Brahmas versus um, who is it? St. Louis. Uh, St. Louis. Yeah, oh, yeah, that's it. The cat. The battle he's Hawks. The St. Louis. He's the St. Louis quarterback. Who's the Who's the San Antonio quarterback? Uh, I'm looking now. San Antonio. I don't know. Is it Martinez? I don't know. I don't see it here. Well, who? Whatever they've done in San Antonio, they've done a great job of, of uh, getting to this point. You know, that's uh, – their head coach is uh, Mike DeFil- – uh, yeah, DeFilippo. Oh, wow. Yeah. And um, I've got a connection to him, so we're working on him for for the off season to get him in okay. and talk about his experience there because he was around the NFL forever. And yeah, I think from an offensive coordinator to quality quality insurance coach. Wow, oh, that's yeah, interesting. Nice we we weren't we weren't too high on McCarron when we seen him play. I mean, he did 
he did carve up DC, but it, that, that wasn't saying much. Yeah, for 200 yards or whatever it was. <laughs> but I, I think for the, for the novice That's carving fan, in the UFL. Yeah. Look, for the novice fan that doesn't watch the UFL, it's not like the NFL. There is no passing that goes on, hardly any passing. The passes are five down checks, and they hope that a guy can run with the ball. Um, the offense is not explosive. The defense is pretty dynamic, but there's more big plays than anything. I think special teams, honestly, from what I've gathered from watching it this year and going to a game, I feel like special teams plays a huger impact on an outcome of a game in the UFL than anything. I think it's the extra point. Yeah. Because, I mean, you can get what? Two, you can get, what, one, is it one? You kick for one? Is that what that is? Then two, three, four? Is that, wait. What is it? It's what one, is it? two, one, three. Yeah, one, two, three. Yep. Yeah. Yep. I mean, if you can get the three, man, if you score and you can get the, the three. The other thing I like about that league is if it's fourth down and you want to go for it to, to try and tie the game up or go ahead in the game or whatever it is, uh, you can go for it and you get one chance at 25 yards. If you don't get it and you don't get the ball, they win. Yeah, that's the way. You know, I love that, that rule. Is. I think that's that a great is. rule. So that's like, yeah. We'll see. Um, we'll have to reschedule Mike and get him back on here. I was glad to just hang out and talk with you today, though. Uh, yeah. I don't know what happened with Mike, but we had we had some good stuff sure. going there between. I'm sure. And if he's at huh? if he's at Callaway, I'm sure he's busy, man. I, yeah, you know yeah, especially goes. going into the open, he probably yeah. didn't realize what he had going down, and and that's okay. I'm sure. He came highly recommended. He and I messaged a lot, and and uh, mm-hmm. I'm sure something happened along the way. So we'll just reconnect with him and have him back on the show again. But this was a good show for us. We we covered a lot of hot button topics, and uh, I guess we'll just wait and see how things play out with Caitlin. We'll wait and see what happens in this this UFL Bowl, and um, we'll see what the Giants do to replace Waller because that's going to be a big replacement right there. You know, that's going to be a, a big need for, for Daniel Jones. That really is. If he's even yeah. a starter. And we'll see how this works out for Mike Tomlin. Uh, is Tomlin going to be able to get them over the hump? Because they've had two really good drafts, and they've had some really good offseason, off-season. signings again. You know, so he needs to change his ways a little bit um, and see how this plays out for him. So, hey, Mike says uh, – our guy Michael Gott says, closest I've ever got to watching the NFL in the flesh is the old NFL Europe back in the day. Whoa. Scottish Claymores. Claymores. Glasgow and Edinburgh. Uh, I saw Kurt Warner for the Amsterdam Admirals. Mike, where are you living? Uh, where are you living, uh, jolly old England over there? I, I love it over there. That's one of my favorite places to visit. Hmm. I, I will admit, though, um, Amsterdam, yeah, that's the joint. In more ways than one. <laughs> All right, Gene, let me let me uh, let me drop this out there for him. Uh, our guys that did not make it today, Michael Chops Mills. You can find him at the Real Big Chops on uh, on the gram, as he says, and on X. And uh, you can find him in his government name on on Facebook, Michael Gregory Mills. Uh, Terry T. Sizzle Young, he's on Instagram and Twitter, is 1T Youngy. Uh, Sheen, give him your stuff. Sheen Hill, Facebook, Instagram, yep. Yep. everywhere. Yes, LinkedIn, sir. everywhere. You link, uh, TikTok now? Did you get the TikTok going? No. Uh, that's, for, that's for the young people, man. I'm old. It's man stuff. Yeah. Hey, Mike White, I know where Leeds is. Absolutely. Um, connect with us here on the Original Sports Podcast with Mark Maraday and the Barbershop Crew. Our next show next week will be the entire uh, – Sheen, I think you're going to be on it, but you're going to be down in uh, in Alabama. Uh, we Alabama. are doing a Juneteenth special, you guys. Um, we're going to talk about some, some impactful black athletes who have um, just impacted their communities as well as uh, their teams. I think it's really important to take a look at that and what better time to do it than um, on Juneteenth. So that's, that's what our show will be about next week. Um, you can check us out on our webpage, podpage.com 
forward slash original sports podcast with with Mark Meriday. Uh, like our Facebook page. Uh, join us on Twitter. Uh, follow us on Instagram. Look at our TikToks. I've been pounding out the TikToks lately. Uh, thanks, Mike. You take care as well. Um, and check out our YouTube channel. Absolutely, positively. Hell to pit. Got to love pit. Um, all of those are either OSP with MM or Original Sports Podcast. Uh, I'd like to thank our networks, uh, Sideline Sports, Let's Talk Sports, Manning Media, all our networks that we are part of, as well as ESEN, Elite Sports and Entertainment Network, where you can find us on their Roku channel every Tuesday night from 9 to 10 p.m. Um, Feel free to let us know if you have any comments, questions, suggestions for future guests, you guys, by reaching us at originalsportspodcast at gmail.com. Um, thanks to our guy, Steve Medley, for doing the voice intro. Steve. Our guy, Charlie Hodgson, for doing all our music. Jackie. And join us next Tuesday, June 18th, for our special Juneteenth show here on the Original Sports Podcast with Mark Meriday and the Barbershop crew at our normal time, 7.05 p.m. Until then, y'all, stay well, stay friendly, stay hyped.